Okay, okay, okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome, 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 welcome to the Garden Quilt and Art Show, where good friends become family, and family is everything. There's a delay between StreamYard and YouTube, so the YouTube people will be coming in shortly. Actually, turn this off because I could hear an echo. And I will give our friends and family a chance to come in. I hope everybody's having a good day. It stopped raining today, but except to walk Mr. Hershey this morning, I didn't get out the house. I have been busy, 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 busy all day long sewing. And this is part of what I've been doing. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da. I changed the quilt in back of me. That is the crazy eight quilt. So it's 601. Hello, Val, the jewelry spot. Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. You have been making such beautiful pieces for Valentine's Day. For those of you who enjoy beading and making jewelry, the jewelry spot comes on just about every day, at least for a little while, sometimes in the morning, sometimes in the evening. I thank you guys for giving the thumbs up on the way in. So we can help our little channel to grow and get into the algorithm. I, They've actually been doing better by me. I've been getting people to come in from Brazil, other places. I get used to get all these channels, not the ones I'm subscribed to, not the ones I have my notifications on, all these weird, weird channels in weird places, but it's all good. Karen's Little Garden, I'm great. How are you? Thank you for coming. I saw you last night in A Resilience Dad, and somewhere, when you look at so many channels, so many shorts, so many things, you know you saw a name, but and a channel, but you just can't remember where. I'm doing well. I'm so excited because I finished two, two important projects today that I've been working on, not working on, but planning on. And I can't wait to show you guys. I'll wait until a few more people come in. Um, you guys, this is, those of you who are here, Da, 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 da. This is the crazy eight fat quarter quilt. And she's finished. The top is finished. She's not quilted. As a matter of fact, I do have a name for her. I bought all this beautiful purple fabric. Purple is supposed to be a royal, a royal color. So that's what. I decided to name her. Her name will be Her Royal Majesty. Uh, yep. And I'm keeping her for myself. At least I think I am. At least I think I am. So let me see. Sometimes you're on 15, 20 minutes before YouTube sends a message out that you're live. That you're live. So, how was the weather? Where, where, Karen's little garden, where are you? Where, what part of the country or the world are you living in? And it says Karen's little garden. So I suppose you have a cute little garden. Let us know in the chat. You like her name, Her Royal Majesty? Yes. 
and I plan on keeping her for myself. She's actually a little bit different than the quilt that was up here. Hey, Crafty Leo, how are you doing? Dun, 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 dun. Mike's Chaotic Gardening. They rolling in the club now on this Saturday night. They in here. They in here. I'm bouncing along with the top of my head out just so that you could see the top of the quilt. You're glad to have been have found my channel. Oh, you live in South Carolina? Well, what's that song? Too much, too little, too late. I moved back to Connecticut from Warrington, North Carolina, our treasured home. Thank you for coming, Nancy. And when I was in North Carolina, I quilted every day, five days a week, and sometimes on the weekend. And I had a quilt studio on the property out there in the boondocks. And I had a 1,500 square foot studio. As soon as I find out how to share screens, I'll start sharing some of the videos of the studio and some of the old pictures with the quilts. Hey, Mike's Chaotic Gardening. Thank you for coming and welcome. And Maria Graham is saying hi to everyone in the chat. So one of the things I wanted to show you guys, I took this quilt down because I actually, it's actually reserved. But those of you who are quilters, those of you who are quilters, oh, you saw the front of the, the quilt. Those of you who have seen it, those of you who have not, you can pull up some old of the last few lives and you'll see it up this quilt is called the crazy eight fat quarter quilt because i did it with fat quarters and it only took like three slices with the rotary cutter you can cut them with regular scissors those of you who show your quilts most of my quilts i exhibit this one the last time i exhibited it it was southern canadian Southern Connecticut State University, and it stayed on exhibit, I want to say about six months. It was during the you know what, and people couldn't come in or go. Everything was shut down. So they kept it on, you know, on view with the cameras and everything so that people could see it. I'm about, I'm not too far from, from the, the university, but you couldn't see the back of the quilt when it was up. So this is the back. And it has Native American fabric and a bunch of black buffaloes. I quilted this quilt myself on my long arm machine. I had a long arm machine then. Hello, Lewis, a.k.a. Psalm 146. But I wanted to show you, those of you who want to... Show your quilts if you don't feel like sewing and a hanging sleeve in the back. This is what a hanging sleeve actually looks like. I make a tube of, you can use whatever fabric you want. I use unbleached muslin and I cut a, a strip eight inches wide and then I sew it closed, turn it inside out. I, I hem the edges and it depends if I'm going to keep it as a show quilt. I actually sew this in and you don't sew it all the way at the top. You see how I sewed it a little. I mean, I pinned it a little way for down from the top. That's because when you hang a quilt on an exhibit, it bunches up at the top. If you put it too close to the top. And I also wanted to show you, Oh, and it wasn't wide enough, this buffalo fabric. Most American fabric is 42 to 44 inches wide. So I put a strip of some African fabric on the sides, on both sides, to make it wide enough. Use what you have. Use what you have. And I love both fabrics. And when I was making this quilt, I was just using whatever I had around. 
And I was looking to see one of the things I do. Well, every quilt should have, I'm trying to hold it up even. Every quilt should have a label. This one actually has a pretty nice label. I like to make my own labels. And the name of this quilt is Dancing in the Rain. It's 56 inches wide by 70 inches long. It says Pieced and Quilted by Ellen Penny Pankey, Warrington, North Carolina, 2012. Hello, Louis Fernando Torres Lopez. That's Psalm 146 using her husband's account. Hi, Bean Juice. Hi, Bean Juice. So one of the, the reasons I put the width on it and the height, for those of you who are quilters, the reason is because if I show my quilt, I have to know how much space I'm going to need in the exhibit. If I'm going to sell it, I have to calculate how wide, how much fabric, the price of the quilt depends on the amount of fabric you put in it, how much batting. I use cotton batting. I like 80-20 because it's a little puffier and it's very warm. And you, you need to know that when you're calculating how much to charge for your quilts. So the quilt charge is based on the amount of fabric and the amount of time. Now, the bigger block quilts don't take as much time. I like them. This is actually a big block quilt. But, and see, here are the people dancing in the rain. That's why I, I named it this. Can you see the rain up close, the raindrops? So, that's why I named this one Dancing with the Rain. And this fabric, the black fabric, with the little dots in it, my daughter actually hand carried from Tanzania on her lap. I'm going to fold this up in a minute. I'm going to throw it over there because I'm going to take the pins out of it. I washed it after, after I got it out of the exhibit and just folded it up. Casings 55. Hello. Hello, everybody. If you're here on a replay, I would like to thank you and ask you to leave a message so that I will know that you're here. I'd like to thank the moderators. The moderators, for those of you who are new, are the ones whose names are in blue. And the names that are in green are the members of the Friends and Family Club who pay $1.99 to help the channel to grow and do receive perks. Some of the perks are getting discounts on purchased items. This quilt, Dancing in the Rain, is actually has a deposit on it by Hudson, and she got a substantial discount. Why? Because that's, that's my way of sharing and, whoops, I like to drop things on the floor. And one of the reasons I quilt so that I it's soothing, it's stress relieving. I love it. And you have something beautiful to, to show for it. I want to talk about a question that was asked on Thursday. I always go back and review, review my... Well, you have to edit after your live shows end. You have to go back and edit them. And after you edit them, you I like to listen to them. And then I, I sometimes say, well, why did I say that word? Like when I was talking about my, my brother Bill and my sister Joanne, I call them both brothers. Okay, clearly, Auntie Joanne is a beautiful lady. But you're walking and trying to chew bubble gum at the same time. And just your brains and your words don't always connect. But one of the questions I was asked was about, and I love to paint. I love to paint. I brought a couple of small paintings out. 
these are watercolor and on watercolor paper and it's just some little you wet the paper down really well i don't know if you can see it i'll just move it around you wet the paper then you dip your brush in paint and just let it fade into each other it's just a soft little something it goes you can use whatever whatever colors you want I'm trying to get mike to break out his paints and then this is a little seascape. North Carolina has some of the most beautiful beaches out at the Outer Banks and out on the water. The Gulf Stream actually comes all the way up for you fishermen. And if you get to the coast and get some boats or you rent boats, you can catch some of the big fish that come up from the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, a, a fish don't, that don't normally come up. They're usually in the islands. So I see, I bring it, Kelly, thank you for coming. Miss Shirley, OG Gardner, thank you for coming, sis. Teresa Bailey. And I'm just going over a couple of things, but the question I was asked, and I didn't understand it, I was talking about painting on acrylic and uh, with acrylic paint and painting on fabric. And somebody asked me if there was special paint. I was speaking about the acrylic, just reg using regular acrylic paint. And I think I said no, but of course, of course there is special paint for fabrics. I'm going to show you some of the signs that my kids made 10, 15, 20 years ago. It is really fun to paint on canvas. You can go and buy, what is it, sailcloth at the craft stores, or you can buy drop cloths really for cheap at the big box stores, on Amazon, cut it up. You can embroider on it with the machine by hand, whatever. But I wanted to show you guys, I, I, I literally have bags of fabric paint, regular fabric paint, some straight paint, some neon paint so i do paint on fabric and whenever i buy paint i always buy big containers of black and big containers of white because why the white paint you mix with all of the paints that you have and these little fabric paints are really cool they have little tips you don't even need a brush unless you're going to dry brush it you can actually paint on this. Nikki, you can paint on the wall. You can get some drop cloths and paint them and make your own mud cloth. And one of the things you can do when you're dyeing it, if you want to make mud cloth, Nikki, you can use tea, like black tea. You can use coffee and you get your canning pot, your big pot, and you boil it. And I never, I never use white fabric in a quilt. I think I told you guys that most of the time, unless it's like a veteran's quilt or something, that's why I had this fabric, a couple pieces, a couple of fat quarters. I bought some random, a random package, and it included that white fabric up there. This had a lot of white in it. So I stuck it in here. And from the time I did the interview with the fabrics, Guess what? I changed a few blocks around. You want to make a table runner, Nikki? That's a perfect start. Will you be sewing by hand or by machine? Uh, put a one in the chat if you guys, Barb Brownlee, thank you for coming. Put a one in the chat if you have a sewing machine. Put a two if you're going to sew by hand. There are some perfect, perfect, Actually, I'm going to do a little table runner because the inside of this quilt is eight blocks. We cut the big blocks out. They're six, six, 16 inches. Maria Graham says she's doing a one. Okay. Karen's little garden says a one. Joanne Stevens says one and two. Joanne Stevens, my sister, is such a 
fantastic artist. Whether she's sewing, she made her high school. Well, we both made our, we, we used to make our clothes in high school and in college. I made my high school prom gown, but mine was just a simple sheath. Of course, I had a little shape like a Coca-Cola glass then. And Joanne's was a Vogue pattern with like flower petals on the top. It must have had 30 or 40 pieces. You worded that wrong. You want to buy a plain table runner and decorate it? You can do both. Our treasured home, or we're going to do a project together. Mike, 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 what are you going to do, sir? You can make something. You can make something for the birds or your critters out there. Another thing that you can do to paint on fabric is by markers. These are not particular fabric markers, but I have a case of fabric, fabric markers as well. I want to, you're welcome, Sissy Joanne Stevens. So I wanted to tell you about marking your quilt. I was so, I was being lazy the other night and talking, talking. By the way, the chat will be coming on at seven o'clock today. And Nikki does that when they're talking about the chat, the talking, um, talky, talky, talking. And I wanted to show you guys that when you're making the eight fat quarters, there was block one and block two. And in row one, I put four, I arranged them after I sewed the blocks together. I showed how to sew them together. So there were four blocks in this vertical row, four blocks in this vertical row. So I wanted to show you block one and block two. Now, when I sew the blocks in row one, when I press the seams, I see people doing all kinds of things. Do it your way. This is, oh my gosh, Joanne remembers the pattern. 56 pieces, bow pattern, Perda Gotts original. Oy vey. She could probably still fit in hers. Not me. Not me. Because my second husband, he saved my life and fattened me up. I went from a size 8 forever to a 14 forever. And sometimes sneaking up on a 16 or whatever forever. It is what it is. So mind you, so this is row one. And I showed you how I chain piece them. I sew this one and then this one and then this one after the blocks were sewn. Then row two. And I put a little sticky at the top with the number. This is row one. This is row two. Then to show you guys those little three and a half inch pieces, I sewed those into rows you saw me. And those are the ones on this side and on this side. Okay, but then I was going to put a Nikki set, whatever. Yeah, we we ain't talking about sizes up in here. We ain't doing that. Oh, Nikki says no chat tonight. Oh, okay. So I don't have to roll over and get out your way over here. So the the three and a half inch, because when we when we cut the fat quarter, we cut it into a ten and a half inch block square. Then there was a 10 and a half inch by six and a half inch block. That was this one, 10 and a half inch, six and a half inch. We sewed those two together. Then there was a six and a half inch block that we sewed on the side. Then why I call it a crazy eight, because you can turn them any which way, any which way you want to. Yes, Yankee sister, it's done. And she has a name. Her name is, I dropped it. Somebody tell me what, oh, Her Royal Majesty. Why? Because purple is supposed to be a royal color. And she is 58 inches wide by 82 inches long. The other quilt, this one, this one, is only 70 inches. So this new quilt is 14 inches longer. It's almost twin size. But the reason I did that is because 
most of the men in my family are over six feet tall. Six feet is 72 inches. When you tuck a quilt under your feet, you want to be warm, then your neck is out. If you cover up your neck, your feet are cold. I have a quilt on my bed now that I use every day. It's like a, it's almost like a weighted blanket. I made it out of my dad's old clothes, a memory quilt after my dad passed. But guess what, you guys, after 10 years, I'm going to add a row on the top, a row on the bottom and on both sides to make it so that when I turned over, my boom, boom is not sticking out. What? Nobody wants their boom, boom sticking out. <laughs> it got cold out this week and I would turn over and I'm like, my back hurts. What over? It would be a little crack of the blanket down there with my boom, boom sticking out. You grow row. Hello. And thank you. I know that you sew. This is an easy pattern. So going back to the story of the blocks and the rows, so because I sew all the row one blocks, the seams I sew down, the row two blocks, I press the seams up. So they nestle together and see how flat they are, see how nice they are. Then I put this side on row three. So if the, I didn't want to change the numbers and start over, and so this little row was a row zero. Me being all cute, being lazy, I put a pin across the top. So I was going to remember that that was row zero. Guess what? I got them mixed up. So you see this, you, you see this fabric and this fabric. I never would have put two fabrics exactly the same together. It looks nice and it's okay. And I said, I'm not picking it out. It's still a pretty quilt. And if I didn't tell you guys, you wouldn't know it. It's a beautiful quilt. And I bought a six yard piece of that pretty purple fabric. Yankee sister brought her behind over there, over here and sweet talk me out of a few, a few little pinches. And she bought them. I whined, I cried. <laughs> the pieces I gave her were wet. I was wide and didn't want to give them up, but I had planned on making a special quilt with it. But I said, I will keep this quilt and it'll be special and it'll be mine. Now this little strip, that little teal strip, if you can see that little teal strip going around the edges, this quilt goes all the way to the floor. A twin quilt, I think is about 90 inches. So this is 84 because my, my, my great grandson, I told you about him making a quilt. He's outgrown two quilts already. And so I have to make a quilt that's at least seven feet tall because he's six foot tall already. And he's only 15 years old. He he's outgrowing everything. He's like a weed. So if, I have company if my brothers come over. One never knows who might need to spend the night on the couch and need a quilt. So I made it big enough so that I have an eight foot sofa over here. So this is a sofa. I can throw it over the back as an accent. It's such bright colors. You know how you go to those fancy hotels and they have the... Um, bed runner like a table runner going across it so this can be used in multiple ways but i just love it because it's purple miss shirley says too you're gonna sew something miss shirley hello auntie ellen pia just now tuning in lots going on listening in the bushes that's okay i appreciate your support and this is such an easy big block quilt you can sew it by hand or by machine this whole thing it's really easy so i wanted to show you guys this and then i'm so pooped out i was hanging out with ard a Lee and dad last night for those of you who don't know his channel he gave his first live and it was crazy eee! he says Yee! it was crazy off the train it was wonderful 
I'm not calling you Hershey. Hershey thinks I'm calling him when I say E. I didn't say Hershey. I said E. So I was hanging out with him. Then I was sewing all day on a project I, I, that I'm going to send to the long armor. Why? Because I sold my long arm machine. I teach long arm quilting. I teach every kind of quilting that there is. I know how to do every type of quilting there is. And that's what I do. That's what I do. Mike says, hi, Mr. Hershey. Hello, mother. Mommy, Mrs. Clara Panky. Love you. So since summer, I've been working on a commission quilt. And someone wanted an all red and black quilt. Well, I've been doing it a little at a little bit at a time and they're paying in installments, but I wanted to finish. These are, these are 18 inch blocks, 18 inches, and they are 18 by 18 inches. There are 240 pieces of nine and a half inch fabric in here. Then I sew them together, cut them on the diagonal, sewed them back together, the top and the bottom, then sewed them together. This was a lot of work. Oh, oh, ARD, hello. Hello, hello, hello. I was just telling everybody about what a good time we had at your place last night and hope you go live again. And not just to give out gifts, just so that we can, we can see what's going on in your life. So these are 30 blocks. Whoops. They're going into a king size quilt and the quilt will be about 105 inches wide by about 86, 90 inches long so that the wide part goes across a, a queen size bed. When you're buying quilts or making quilts and they tell you a size and it says queen size, don't believe it. The quilt that they're talking about is the top of the mattress. You don't want that. You want it to be like a bedspread and hang down. So if you have a queen size bed, always make a king size quilt. If you have a king size bed, you need to make it at least 120 inches by 120 inches over 100 inches. Auntie Joanne's, Auntie Joanne's quilts I make for her bed. Well, one of them is 120 by 120 inches, but I noticed that the other ones don't come down as far as I really like it to, but she loves it anyway, but she has a high poster king size bed. Yes, size up. Size up. So there are 30 of these blocks, so I will arrange them six across and five down. <laughs> I don't have, I do have a portable design wall, but I live in a limited amount of space. So I have a full size bed. I have one of those cardboard folding things that you used to cut on. I have one of those. I take the pillows off and put it on my bed. Then I lay my blocks out. Then I put the numbers on them on the row and roll it up. Then I bring it in here where I can sew them. I'm saying that to tell you that Auntie Joanne said she absolutely love her quilts. She has every size quilt there is, every size there is, and she loves all of them. I have a small place, so I have to use, I don't use, I hate carpet, but this place has carpet in it. And I have tile floors in the kitchen and in the bathroom. I have never, a really, ARD is saying, Maria, good to see you. Everybody's speaking, saying what an what an awesome de job you did, nephew, ARD. And from the day I moved in this apartment, they put brand new carpet down. I don't wear shoes in my apartment. I do it the Asian way. You take your shoes off at the door. I did that in North Carolina as well. And then I have the, or I have the footies like you were in the hospital. I buy them. They're in a ceramic jar by the door. The maintenance men told me they thought it was one of my three 
husbands in there in the jar. Man, that jar's so big, it could have had all three of them in the same jar. But no, that's where I keep the foot covers. Or if they prefer to take their shoes off, my girlfriends, my sister friends and family come in. But I have extra socks and footies that are clean in there that they can put on. The maintenance, one of the maintenance men that's assigned to my building, he just, oh, I take my shoes off. It doesn't feel like hair in my mouth. But that's the reason because sometimes I lay my quilt blocks on the floor or on the bed and I want them to be clean. Oh, Mrs. OG. Hey, mom and mother. People are saying hello to you. My mother loves it. She'll tell me who said hi to her. Mrs. Stevens, thanks to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Everybody, you're welcome, ARD. Thoroughly enjoyed your live. You use shoe covers too, Kat? Yeah, nobody wants to, to have. And now I live on the second floor. I come in like the back door downstairs. I have to walk maybe 50 yards, then take a left to get to the elevator, come up, then come around. I shouldn't be saying all that people, you know, weird people picking up information. But I said that to say it's a long walk. Who knows what I picked up in here? So now let's talk about, let's talk about prepping. And those of you who are saying things, I just want to take a little break. Those of you who, has anybody lost power during this, this winter? Okay, uh, Maria, uh, don't put him on the spot about when his next live is. He's going to post it and let us all know. We have not even gotten out the gifts yet. Although I have the one that the ones that I'm mailing in a box, I have to get the information to, for uh, to, to go to Canada. ARD's live was on it. It was on fire on fire. So eventually though, you guys, I will have it so that you can drop a link, a drop a link. But right now we want to stay on subject because I will forget to tell people what they're asking about garden quilt and art show. So how many of you have one of these? Kat says, hi, everyone, and thanks all who said hello. Hello, Kat, and thank all of you. Why, Auntie Joanne and I were talking verbally today, and she was saying what a close community we have, how everybody sticks together. Good friends become family, and family is everything. So this is a real iron. I actually used it one time on the homestead in North Carolina, we had several buildings on the property and sometimes the electricity would go out. Actually, it was raw land when we bought it. We, we dug our well. We had an artesian well down 300 feet. We, had, we put our own, actually three septic tanks on the property. We had to dig all the trenches. We had to do everything. Maria said she doesn't have one, but she knows how to use it. You stick it in the fire, you rest it on here. I don't know much more than that. Other than this, you can use it because guess what? You may live off grid like eco neighbor, like Gigi, and they are in real estate. Mike said he's lucky he lives on a main street power. So he's really down if ever. When I was on the North Carolina homestead, sometimes when there are ice storms and whatnot, the roads weren't paved. Nothing happened. Sometimes the power would be off for a shh, hush, Hershey. It would be off for a week. So you just didn't open the big, big, big freezers. Um, I have something else I want to show you guys. Miss T with the T was talking about it. For those, stop it, Hershey. For those of you who are new to the channel, I have a video on different types of tea bags, making the cloth tea bags, making tea from dry herbs, 
using the metal strainers that you put in it and using the pitchers that you pour the water in. Hey, Jags, J3GS, I saw you. I saw you with that sweet baby. You lick your finger and touch it to make sure that it's hot. Yeah. Yeah, except we can't do no licking no fingers anymore. I want to show you guys something because it is an antique. I will try not to drop it. I already dropped it once and I had to repair it. Hershey, stop. I'm going to put you up. Who knows what this is? Has anybody seen one of these? This is a very special antique, Hershey, knock it off. A very special antique coffee grinder. You see where the dovetails are in it, where it was fastened. You don't find these very often. Louis Fernando Torres Lopez, they say it's a coffee grinder. Exactly. Hershey, just a minute, you guys. Why is it not muting? Hershey, knock it off. No, come. Sorry, you guys. So uh, you put the coffee in, the coffee beans. I can't use to, I keep my coffee beans in the in the freezer. You turn this around. But look at look at this. I don't know if you can see the writing and the Roman numerals. He's full of vinegar tonight. I tell you, he's acting a fool over there. He hears me saying J-O-A-N-N-E. He's under the chair waiting for my sister to take him for a walk. And he got that from her dog because her dog, when she wants to go out, barks. And if you say the name J-O-A-N-N-E, come on, Hershey, stop. So you put the coffee in, the coffee beans, up here. See where it's open? Then you close them. This thing's probably about a couple hundred years old. Then, actually, I put it down on my lap. How about this? You grind it around. You hold it by this, and then there's a little drawer over here. You open it up, and the coffee is down there. Yankee sister saying hello to Karen's little garden. And I found this at an antique store in Arizona, and you had to bid on it. Can anybody guess who bought it for, for her sister? Auntie Joanne went back. I ran back to Coffee Mill Grinder. You have one from a family member. I, I have a lot of antiques. I, I just love this. Another thing for prepping. I have a lot of antiques, you guys. Another thing for prepping. Whoops. Other than my old. Oh, is... Before, what my aunts never had, that my grandmother didn't have any type of beaters or something. They use a big wooden spoon. Sometimes it was carved by somebody in the family. And this one, I don't know if you could see it. This one has real copper on it. Can you see this? This one is like an aircraft engine. Can you see the gears on it? It's stainless steel. And when you, when you roll it, when you roll it, it's like new. It almost goes by itself. Why am I showing you these things? Because when you go, I got rid of most of the antiques, Nikki. I started over in this apartment because the North Carolina homestead was sold as is, and they wanted to. They wanted all the antiques that were in there. They said that's cute. They're talking to each other. Yes. So hi, Dolores. Oh, Dolores, thank you for coming. 
we haven't met, but I assume that you're Dolores from ARD. So these are some of the things that you pick up in case you live off grid or just because you like them. I don't actually have to worry about it. I do have a small solar powered. That's why it's still in good condition, quality metal. Um, that it, it, it's because I, I like those things and I just wanted to keep them. But this, I live in an apartment. Everything in here is new except for a few antiques that were like left at my mother's house and whatever so exactly yankee sister dolores hq so that's why it's still in good condition so and i take good care of my things i take i take i take care, good care of my things. i still have my high school yearbooks they are what almost 60 years old oh thank you dolores thank you if you sew, I'd love to teach you guys how to make them and we can make some together. I'm working on Mother's Day presents. Oh, when I go in the hospital to spend the night, my travel pillow is going with me in a suitcase. This one is going to be my for my daughter's birthday, my son's birthday. He doesn't do birthday gifts and stuff, but I'm going to send it anyway, just not on his birthday. And then one for my grandson. So I'm making all of the gifts for my family. And I know that I won't be able to sew for a while after my knee replacement in two weeks. So I'm getting all these projects, all these projects ready so I can do some hand sewing. And maybe you guys will do some hand sewing with me. You were fantastic lady, Dolores. You found one at Goodwill in excellent condition for very cheap. I just love that. And I, again, I want to thank all of you for coming to G Quad Quilt Garden Quilt and Art Show. And good friends become family and family is everything. This old, this old bell I cleaned it up, was my lead goat's bill, Jags. My goat, Lilac, used to have this on her. I could find out where she was on the property because she was a 4-H goat and she was used to going to... Boy, that makes my arm look weird. She was used to going to shows and she would jump in the car. She liked to ride. Yeah. So... Let's go over. Does anybody have any questions about any of the projects? Those of you who are planning on making this quilt, it's an excellent first quilt. It's a big block quilt. You can see the two big blocks up in the corner with a thin, a thin border and then a purple border. You can make it whatever size you want. You can make, I wanted a two and a half inch border. But I didn't have two and a half inches of the that teal color. So I just used what I had and instead made the purple border a little bit wider. Hershey, come. I'm so sick of you. Come. You know how you take your kids to the grocery store and they act up? Um, he's determined to act up. So we've got 15 minutes, you guys. Let's go do something. So what are you guys, is anybody doing 15 minutes a day? You don't have to show us, but just tell us, is anybody doing their 15 minutes a day? Why did I pick 15 minutes for a challenge to do something, create something? Because everybody, even if you work, you have a 15 minute lunch break in the morning. You have one in the afternoon. You have your lunch hour. You need to usually go eat and decompress for that. But you can take 15 minutes. Barb Lee says, the quilt is beautiful. Love it. Thank you. So I'm planning on keeping this one for myself. Angel just popped up again looking for her daddy. She probably hears Hershey acting up too. Oh, by the way, Hershey is the father to Auntie Joanne's dog. 
Mr. Hershey has a wife. His wife lives at my mother's house. And Auntie Joanne has his daughter. And out of his nine children, my granddaughter babysits them from time to time. And they come to my to my mom's house. And uh, mommy says, oh, Coco was here this week or this one was here because... We, we keep the dogs in the family. The only reason they're here is because I came home one day from a Christmas party with my mom and my granddaughter is a grown woman with children of her, her own. I'm talking about Nana, the dogs got stuck. What do you mean the dogs got stuck? Dolores wants to sew and crochet more. You have a, fill, a pillow to finish? Bring it and do it here, especially on Saturday nights. Dolores, on Sunday nights and Monday nights at midnight, Mona sifting some soil, and F.R. Humphrey go live. I get up. I set my clock. I always take a nap. After this live, but Shirley knows, I usually take a nap. And I get up just so that I can crochet and do arts and crafts with them. It's a lot, a, a lot of fun. So does anybody have any questions before I go? <laughs> exactly, Nikki. Exactly, Nikki. And after she said the dogs got, I'm like, well, didn't you guys see something? Put some cold water on them, something. You didn't see them like sniffing around each other. Oh, and the, but then she's like, oh, well, some of the teachers on my job want puppies. Oh, so I see what happened. I see what happened. And then two years later, guess what? Same story. I bought Hershey for a show dog. And I had planned on, that's what I, that's what I said, uh, uh, Psalm 146. And except I wasn't home. I wasn't home. And when I got home two years later, same story. And guess what? There were some more teachers and people, don't worry, Nana, I'll take care of selling the puppies. I'll do everything. The kids were giving them bottles. I always supplement my puppies, my puppies, whether they're Connie Corsos or the Shih Tzus, with goat's milk. In fact, I think the dogs used to think that the goats were, were their mother because when I used to come home from wherever I would come in and the goats would be loose sitting on the front porch next to the Connie Corsos, but nothing better come near the, near, near the goats. All oh, those dogs would get in, in, go, go into action. So Yankee sister said that she did her 15 minutes saved seed sorting. Okay. Seed sorting is not making something beautiful. It's growing something edible, but your grandkids gonna be cold because you didn't sew that fabric together. Go where the good milk is. Exactly. I was supposed to be breeding the goats and getting the milk so that I could make yogurt and dairy products. I didn't, <laughs> dumb farm girl, but I never got that done, but we had a good time with all our critters so we are going over to the machine, do something for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Not that I haven't been doing something all day long. I'm so happy to finish those 30 blocks for that king size quilt. And yes, I am sending it out Whoops, to the long armor. Oh, I know why this is here. For those of you who are new, just starting to sew, sew by hand, when I started sewing, this is what I used for a pattern. Just a piece of cardboard. I marked out a pattern, traced it, and cut it with scissors. Now, I've always sewn clothes, Auntie Joanne and I. Daddy bought us, <laughs> he, he bought a sewing machine for my mom. Mommy, I know you're listening. And then I came home. Oh, Maria likes my my captain. Thank you. And I came home whining about sewing. And, of course, Daddy always gave Pin Pin, the good daughter, whatever she wanted. All I had to do was cry one little tear. 
And he took mommy's machine back and bought two really nice singer machines for Auntie Joanne and I. And we still have them somewhere, somewhere. You took 15 minutes cutting out pictures for magazines for a garden junk journal. Oh, that's nice. Layers of shoots and eyes. Any type of art, any type of art. Postcards, fabric postcards. For those of you who are new, that might be a beginning project. Nikki Nick. I will get them or it's just fun. You guys doing something. This is something bean juice can do. This is just painting a rock. I found a pretty rock. I'm actually going to send this one to my grandson, a grown man and California, he'll always have something of his grandmother to hold on to. This was a rock I painted like a strawberry as a decoy in my garden to keep the birds from picking at my real strawberries. Okay, so a fabric postcard, or you can make it all paper to make it an art. Hello, big mommy, Panky, mommy Clara. So... This one, this one is the Coupe de Gras. This postcard is a collage. It's fabric and paper. And Auntie Joanne made it for me for my birthday present when I was in Arizona. Can you see the cactus flowers, the detail on here? We're actually going to send it to Spoonflower or someplace like that and have it made into cards or wallpaper, or wrapping paper. Look at this, you guys. I, I I don't make anything that detailed. This, hi, Mala'a. Thank you for coming and welcome. So this is a fabric postcard by Auntie Bev. And she put, you're the best. And she handmade it. She's, but what I want you to see is this, you guys, she made this totally by hand. Do you see her hand stitches on here where she connected the cardboard with the paper? She painted some of the flowers on and the red one is like origami. She folded fabric and made the fabric flower on there. And now to be a quilt, you need three layers. You need a top layer, batting, and backing. Miss Shirley says, hello, Mother Panky. She's going to like that. I was going to her house tomorrow, but guess what? It's going to snow again. I'm going to be stuck here where I am. This beautiful card with all these beautiful fabrics is from our Maria Graham. I have a challenge for you guys. You guys know that I create things. Anybody who makes a fabric postcard or a paper postcard and sends it to me, I will send you one of my art postcards. And by making postcards that are quilts, I can actually show those in quilt shows as functional functional art. Look at this cute one. This is from Ellen Campbell. She has ch a channel learning to quilt and sew. And she put on the back where you put the stamp, but she put hers in a, in a plastic binder, a, one of these plastic holders. By the way, you can buy the plastic holders like Auntie Joanne has hers in it. Or you could just use a sandwich bag, just a plain grocery store sandwich bag to put them in so that so that they don't get messed up in the post office and they're collector's items. And then here's another one that Ellen Campbell sent. And she was showing what she was showing, how she meandered and was learning how to machine quilt. Okay. So just to show you guys something that you can do, it's stress relieving. 
It's fun. And people love collecting these. People love collecting them. Uh, those of you who are moderators, I need, if I don't have your, I have the mailing address for all the moderators. Those of you who are channel members, Crafty Leo, I need your mailing address so that I can send you a fabric postcard. All of the members of the Friends and Family Club will be getting one. They were supposed to go out for the first of the year, but it's January and I've just been sewing my little tail off trying to get these projects done because I won't be able to sew, sew, sew after my knee replacement in two weeks. But I can do little things. I can make postcards. I can put my foot up. I can sew by hand. And I will have fun with you guys. I'm coming home the next day, you guys. They are not keeping me in there. I'm taking my pill. Oh, and the, the nurse navigator at this hospital. I had the biggest fight with him three years ago. And I wrote him up. I wrote him up. He came in my room and I had my bed up off the floor. Because when I slide down, that's what was more comfortable for me. African Dream and hi, Jay and or April. Thanks for coming in. And he's standing in the doorway talking to me to uh, get that bed down. I don't know who he thought he was talking to. He picked the wrong one. And I asked him who the bad word he thought he was talking to. And he better get his behind up out of my room with that nonsense and this wasn't the place to bring that stuff to. <laughs> I lit him up and I wrote him up. They assigned another nurse navigator. He's really good at his job, but he, he wasn't used to patients like me. This was in another part of Connecticut. He didn't have people like me coming in and I let him have, and then I went in his office. I said, you talk real bad, real bad over there. <laughs> you talk real bad. So by the time I had other th other things, I called him up. Hi, Peter. This is your favorite patient. And we, we're we buddies now. We're buddies now. We're good buddies. But he knows who not to bring it every day to. I bring it every day. He knows better. He knows better. And my name is not. Call me Miss Panky if you need something to do with your mouth. Oh, great. That's what you need to do. <laughs> so now what we're going to do with our 15 minutes, guess what? I don't know what kind of counting I did because I had eight fat quarters, but I must have cut up nine and I have one left. So he is still on staff. I talked to him yesterday. We're friends. I have a cell number in my phone. <laughs> I have a cell number, baby. Once I get you straight, we good. We good. You just don't. When you come, come correct. That goes for anybody, you know. As long as you don't put your hands on me, I'll tell you when you step across the, the line the wrong way. And you're not going to talk to me any kind of way. Yep, stay tuned. So I'm going to take this extra block. And I cut the ends off because most most table placemats are 12 inches by 18 so we know this block was 16 inch square so i cut a piece of it off and what we're going to do auntie ellen we can't wait until you're recovered because in two weeks you're having a pace worker we can recover together oh blessings nancy and i'm praying for your recovery nancy uh yankee sister is having some stuff done miss shirley said right i was bad a thousand times uh, i i might as well take a million because if he gets in my face again miss shirley guess what <laughs> guess what miss shirley i'm i'm gonna have to get the side of the cross i was bad i was bad but he was worse, and I had to check. I had to check him. I'm like, where is he? I went to his office looking for him. Oh, you? You? You with the big mouth? Now what? <laughs> hey, PAA. She's back. So 
what I'm going to do is turn on this heavy duty machine that I bought that my mother and dad paid more for my first machine than I paid for this one, but I like it. You're finally getting answers about your heart and getting it fixed. Prayers and world blessings. Everybody, can we, I don't know if everybody believes in God. Can we do a moment of silence? And those of you who believe in God, please say a prayer for our treasured home because the heart is a big thing. Okay, thanks everybody. And thanks, Nancy. Thank you. So the little pieces I'm going to sew on the end and somebody at some point will be getting a cute, a cute little table runner. It's going to probably be too cute to put greasy pots and pans on, but that's what we're going to do. It matches everything in here because everything is like kind of a neutral color, gray, black, a few things. And then my accent colors are like teal, turquoise, and art, artwork, artwork, artwork. So what I'm doing is just taking some scissors. I know this is square because I cut it on my cutting mat with a rotary cutter. And you know what? I'm going to show you guys how to safely change the, the blade in a rotary cutter. I know some of you have rotary cutters. I don't know if you know the right way to change the blade or the safe way. So I cut that end. And I've already got them pinned where they are going. Let me make sure that they're... So this is going to be a little longer than 12 by 18. But I'm going to let it be what it is. It'll just be an extra long casserole pad or table runner. And so many people like purple. Mike's chaotic gardening has one, but it got, it got, it got, I won't say repossessed, but somebody else that lived there and it wasn't the squirrels loved it. So I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it last seen out the front door. Thank you. And um, our treasure home says, thanks for everyone having surgery soon or not feeling well. And, you know, that's one of the things, like, whenever I say, oh, I'm 75 years old, people say, don't claim it, don't claim it. I do claim it. And I'm happy to claim it. You know why? Because everybody didn't get to be 75. Everybody didn't get to wake up this morning. I am so happy. Happy, happy, happy. He said, I, 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 didn't, I didn't say any names, Mike. You might get punished. You might get punished. You might be get punished for telling. So, okay, I'm going to sew this. But does anybody want to see the correct way to change the blade in a rotary cutter? Put a one in the chat if you would like to. I said I was going to make a separate video. But you know what? I don't make videos for the public or the international airways. I'm set. I'm set. I'm I'm comfortable in my retire. I live on my little rocking chair money, AKA my retirement. And I'm okay. The little extra money I get from the channel, I spend on the channel. Like I need a, I need a printer. I don't have a printer. I don't need that antique sewing machine, but I want it. It has a history. Okay, everybody says about the rotary cutter. No, no, no. I know how to do it. I will just trim this. Let me get one. I want you guys, because some of you probably don't have the blade in it correctly. You probably took it out and changed it and just 
for year after year, keep putting it back the same way it's in there. But okay. I would say I'm C O M I N G, but then Hershey will start barking because he thinks somebody's at the D O O R. All right. So the first thing you do is if you're right handed, you know that your you know that you hold your rotary cutter in your right hand. If you're actually cutting with, if you're actually cutting with a rotary cutter, you put a glove on your non-dominant hand, the glove that's holding the ruler, whatever, that's where you put a glove on. It could just be one of those little knobby, knobby gloves from the Dollar Tree. I don't, I don't have one here right now just for the sake of just for the sake of conversation i'm just going to put this glove on and pretend that it is it's not it's not a or you can get a meat cutter's glove i actually have one of those as well i just don't want to take your time taking it out because this is just an incidental conversation what this is, for those of you who are crafters, if you have arthritis in your fingers or rheumatism or anything like that, or your hands just get tired, this is called a crafter's glove. A crafter's glove. They sell salty, no gloves cheap now. Yes, Mr. Hershey can spell. I know. If you say... J-O-A-N-N-E or R-O-S-C-O-E at Auntie J's house, her dog starts screaming. She screams at the top of her lungs. Okay, so this is a rotary cutter. We'll pretend this is a safety glove, a meat cutter's glove, or one of those knobby gloves. You keep a few pairs next to box cutter, kitchen. Yes, yes. So... This is how a rotary cutter is set up, and it has a blade. Whenever you put your rotary cutter down, even if it's for a second, close it. Do not leave it like this and say, well, I'm going to pick it right back up. No, I don't want to hear you picking it back up. Close it because it can fall off the counter, hit your foot. I've seen people cut hunks out of their foot or hunks out of their leg with a sharp rotary cutter. Hey Duval, City Girl Gardener. So this is a rotary cutter. You notice that the blade, the bl and you can change the blade if you're left-handed or right-handed. So this is a steel blade. This is a screw holding it on. There's a plastic part in the back. Then there's the plastic frame itself. Why do I have my name on mine? Because all tools look alike. Sometimes I, I, I give classes, I go to classes, and all the tools look alike. People will pick yours up, especially if yours looks better than theirs, and swear to everybody they believe in above that you took theirs. I don't have that problem. Ever since I learned how to write when I was three or four years old, I put my name on everything. Right, sissy? Okay, so... The first thing you do is hold, hold your rotary cutter up. Why? Because when you take this screw off, I'm going to move it just because I, and there's a, a flat side. I don't know if you can see it. You see where it's grooved in? And then there's a flat. There's the flat side. There's the groove side. So when you put it back on, the groove side goes down. Okay? So you put it on something flat where you can't knock it over. 
Then there's this little washer under there. You see the washer has a little curve to it. So when you put it on and take it off, the curved side goes up. The curved side goes up. So you put that beside the washer. Then you hold it down and you take this part off. You see this little part with the flapper? You take that off. Then you're left with the blade. You put your finger over on the blade. This is why, if you're not used to it, you should have a glove on both hands. I'm used to, de to dealing with these. And this is not a dull blade, so I'm going to put it back on. Then you have the screw. So if you're changing the blade, you do it just in reverse. You take the blade... You put it back on. You put this whole part, you put the black part flat down on it. You put this little washer on top with the cup going up. Then you put, make sure your fingers are not near the edge of the blade. You put the screw back on with that little cuppy side going down towards the screw. Ta-da! And then you close it. You close it by pushing it forward. And that's how you change the blade safely on a rotary cutter. Okay, so let's just take like 10 or 15 minutes just to say we accomplished something because guess what? I'm at 1,444 subscribers. And when I get to 2,000, I'm going to have a giveaway. It's always much easier to do a little cash app, whatever. But people love something that's handmade. And not everybody has somebody who sews and makes them. So it's shipping is so it's so expensive that it's it's hard to make stuff it's it's easier to just send a cash app rather than make something then pay to ship it but i like making things for people who like to collect homemade things so we're going to i pin that on the wrong side that's the side that I was actually cutting on. When you're sewing, for those of you who are new sewing, you take the strings wherever you left them and you push them towards the back of the machine. Then I'm going to, yep, yeah, you can see. A few stitches forward, back. Oh, and Yankee Sister, to answer your question, sewing the blocks together on the quilt, I don't backstitch on the blocks. When I get to the borders, when I get to the borders and put the borders in, I do backstitch. Why? Because you're going to be holding the quilt up and down and stretching it, pulling it, sending it to the long arm or working on it yourself. You can even stay stitch around the entire edge if you want to. Mike's Cat and Garden says, I make the best stuff. Thank you. I try to make it better than you could buy it. Else, why not buy it for cheap? You might as well buy it for cheap. There's some some stuff coming from some country for cheap that you can get it. But if I'm going to use my time making something for somebody I care about, I don't want it to be all raggedy. I don't know if you saw me when I was at Auntie Joanne's house and we were at the dinner table or whatever. The table runners, those were handmade. Those were handmade. That That's a fun project. And those of you who want to sew, everybody doesn't want to cut their fabric out. I love cutting fabric out. You know why? Because nobody has the fabrics I have. I buy the weird fabric. I collect the fabric 
that nobody has. And that's why I have all this purple fabric that Yankee sister slobbered over because I bought the whole six yard piece of it. I didn't want anybody to have any of it when I bought it from the seller. So what am I doing? I'm chain piecing because this piece is long enough. I'm just going to line up the corner and I was going to sew a quarter inch seam, but it's not lined up straight. I'm going to push it over and I'm going to do a quick little back stitch. Going to use my fingers and my eyes. Now, what I do is once when I'm assembly line sewing to keep that end from pulling, I just hit it with my snips. Hit it with my snips. And then these two seams are nestled. One's going up, one's going down. It's not quite the same size, but if you have seams that don't match and it's like an eighth of an inch, you can adjust those and make them, make them fit. Now I'm doing this because I want to show you guys show you guys something so this is what we have but this is really really good fabric this is my good batik fabric left over from my quilt what i have intentionally made a table runner out of this or a casserole pad no why because it was too expensive to be spilling gravy and grease on it but it is what it is, and I'm going to use it. So this piece is turned out to be 23 inches. I will make a backing for it. But what I wanted to show you is how when you have little things like this, use your scrap batting. Use your scrap batting. And piece it together for little things like this. So you see, this was a big piece. This was a big piece from the bottom of a quilt or something that I was working on. So what am I going to do? I'm going to find a zigzag stitch change it to a wide length and a wide width. Maybe I'll make it a four. Okay. And we're going to, I'm just showing you that you can piece batting together. So you can see the whole table. So just by putting it, uh, Barb Brownlee says, beautiful pattern material, thank you. But she said, don't worry, take it easy. So what I'm going to do is put these two pieces close together. I have selected a really wide stitch. I'm going to start, um, when you're sewing, you guys always start with your needle position up in the up position. When you're turning corners, you leave it down. But when you start sewing, you start with it up. And I'm going to, oops, I missed. So I'm going to back up. Maybe I'll put a wider stitch. Yep, now it's doing it. We're only sewing batting together. I'm just doing it to show you, for example, that nothing goes to waste. And we're making a table runner. So 
you know, it's not that serious. Use what you have. I kind of like it because it makes it thick in the in the middle, a little thicker than normal. So I'm just showing you guys some things that you can make for your own home. Those of you who like to make things. Those of you who would like to make things. And I hate throwing anything away. I have to, though, because I'm running out of... I, I, there's only so much room. There's only so much room here in this apartment so and i know my daughter's coming she i'm trying to keep her from coming to the hospital for my surgery and to just come here she's gonna say mom you need to purge mom you have so much stuff her and auntie joanne keep everything put away perfectly neat you think you're walking into a, a, a home magazine when you walk in their place until I get there, that is. I'm just saying. But I'm working, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. So now this piece is sticking up. See, this looks like a doctor's stitches, right? And then you just keep adding to it and adding to it. I'm going to make one more pass at it, and I think it might be wide enough for this table mat. If not, I will add more to it. I will add more to it. So you see how I had that little, you know what else I use these strips for? These small strips. I use them for I use them for for key fobs. So this is what I use cut up to put in here. I have these that are that I'm working on that will be next in my 15 minutes a day challenge because it's just fun to have something to show. Oh, I had 15 minutes. Look what I did. I'm just going to sew this and we'll be done so that you can see just with the scraps that some people throw away, we will have enough to make our table mat on Thursday when we come back. I think we have two more Thursdays before my surgery. And then I'll be doing... Lots of physical therapy. I exercise every day anyway, you guys. And in the beginning, you go to make sure to the doctor's office and they stretch you and do some hard stuff to make sure that you get the flexibility that you're supposed to have. Then you do it at home. But I always exercise all my life. Um, so this batting looks like it lost the war it looks like the walking wounded but nobody's gonna see it nobody's going to see it inside of this table runner because somebody mentioned making a table runner And I see I missed over here. I think I, yeah, over here. So I'll just go back over it later on when I'm home alone and playing by myself. So now I made a piece of batting. 
Dun, 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 dun. It's not quite white enough. I'll put one more piece on. I like it to overlap. Francesca, hello and thank you. You're being so healthy already. Will definitely speed my recovery time. Francesca says, hello, Auntie Ellen and chat. Listening in the bushes, thought I would let you know that I will be praying for you and your recovery, Auntie Ellen. Thank you very much. I am in in, in excellent physical shape especially for 75. I had my blood pressure a couple of weeks ago and it was like 132 over 70 or something like that. And my rheumatologist goes, oh, you're a perfect specimen. Yep. That's why you can, well, keep coming in here, replacing stuff because, you know, you can charge my insurance company and I'll actually live afterwards. <laughs> I don't have to cook. I eat great. I do cook. I cook and, and then I freeze it or, but I eat really healthy. Like I had kale and potatoes. I did put, I don't eat a lot of meat, but I came across some really nice smoked pork shanks and I put one in there. I cooked kale one day this week. I cooked cabbage one day this week. I don't eat a lot of meat. I had that in there. One of my neighbors that I always tell you about, that we always fight, like Felix and Alex. She came and brought me a little box of Omaha steak stuff because her brother brought her something, so she wanted to share with me so I wouldn't have to cook. So it is about 7.30, you guys. The collagen will help too. Oh, I have so much, I have so much bone broth in the refrigerator already. So much bone broth. I must have six quarts, six quarts of it, and I will be making soups or whatever. Does anybody have any questions about anything about tonight? I will be using some of the time, my recovery time, like I was showing you guys how to change the rotary cutter blade and making shorts and put it out there. Maria Graham says, another great life. Thank you. Mother, I go, I'm okay, mommy. Mommy waits an I in American Sign Language. L, this is a U. I love you. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for coming. And I will see you Thursday.